What's going on guys? Chase here with my buddy Moto Nasty, and in today's video, we have the Commuter Bike Challenge. Now, this isn't just gonna be a motorcycle race, this is gonna be a deep dive video to find out which one of these motorcycles is best for daily riding, the long commute, everything you guys need out of a commuter motorcycle. Is it the storage? Is it the agility? Is it the comfort? Is it the tiny things that at the end of the day matter the most? That is what we want to find out today. Now, I know a lot of you guys are looking at the Goldwing and be like, oh, James, there's no way anybody could take the throne from the Goldwing. But here, I have my fully modded out 2023 CF Moto Ibex 800T that I think might have a chance at changing the status quo. So you guys let us know what bike you would rather commute on in the comments down below. Stick around to the end of the video to find out which one we title it, the king of the commute. You guys stick around and let's go for a ride with Moto. Yay, friends. In the world of motorcycles where legends are born and challenges are met, emerges the 2022 Honda Goldwing, a titan in Honda's illustrious touring lineup. This beast is not just a motorcycle, it's a statement. With its roaring six-cylinder engine, it promises not just a ride, but an odyssey. Every curve, every mile becomes a testament to its unmatched performance and luxury. Its advanced suspension and ergonomic prowess beckon the rider for a journey like no other. And with cavernous storage and a cutting edge infotainment system, it's not just about the destination, but the unparalleled experience of the commute. In the battle of the roads, the Honda Goldwing doesn't just compete, it dominates. Okay, like I, I know the Goldwing is good. I, I love the Goldwing, but are you good, bro? Oh yeah, I, I just asked ChatGPT to write me a uh, dramatic intro for the Goldwing. Do you think it was too much though? No, I mean, it's a great bike, so I totally get it. I know, right? Do you want to hear the one I wrote for the Ibex? I mean, it wrote for the Ibex? Oh, absolutely. In a realm where adventure beckons and the open road calls, the 2023 CF Moto Ibex 800T rises to answer. A marvel of engineering, this machine is not just a motorcycle, it's an emblem of freedom. With a heart-pounding 799cc engine, delivering a staggering 94 horsepower, every twist of the throttle is a promise of adrenaline. Its KYB suspension and aluminum alloy bash guard prepare it for the harshest terrain, while the heated grips and the seat ensure the rider's utmost comfort. The Ibex doesn't just adapt to the journey, it defines it. From its seven inch TFT display with Bluetooth connectivity to its quick shifter and adjustable windscreen, every feature is a testament to CF Moto's commitment to excellence. As the dust settles and the horizon beckons, one thing is clear. The Ibex 800T is not just built for the road, it's built for legends. Okay, I know you're happy with that one, right? Yeah, this AI stuff is absolutely hilarious. Okay, enough of the AI shit, let's go ride motorcycles. Are you ready to be challenged? Are you ready to rock? <laughs> All right, so guys, uh, we're here. We've got gas in both of the motorcycles. We're starting at a full tank. And at the end of the video, we're gonna find out uh, which bike says they can go farther. I know for a fact my Ibex can go around 200 miles per tank. So I'm interested to see how the Goldwing does. Um, but before we start going, Moto, one of the key challenges if you commute on a motorcycle is uh. when you get into t <laughs> when you get into town, 
inevitably, you have to ride around tight areas. So I challenge you to slowly and tightly ride around this QT and I will follow you and we will see how you do because I don't think that Goldwing is as good at slow speed maneuvering as my Ibex is. So you're saying you want me to wreck my Goldwing before we even leave this gas station? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, think I, can, I, can, I think I can arrange that. Oh, no. But I hear, that, I hear that you have everything that I need to repair my motorcycle if I do crash. I do have lots of storage, but we will talk about that later. <laughs> All right, you have to go out and take a left, and I'll follow you and do my best to stay with you. And if oh, I no. fail, then you're better. Oh, you're on DCT, by the way. We need to make that clear. It, yes. You have a DCT. Yeah, see, this is harder. Because if you I didn't so? have DCT, yeah, if I didn't have DCT, I would have way more control. I'll give you that. Because I, I, I could have a lot more clutch play. I'll give you, all right, everybody in the comments, give Moto a handicap for whatever is about to happen. Oh, also, I, don't I thought hit you were going to say something completely different. <laughs> for, for, for the not safe for work version of this video, I thought that Chase said, everyone in the comments, give Moto a hand. Are you ready for this? I, I don't know. I'm going to find out. Are Wait, you doing? What, what happens when I lose? Can I keep putting my feet back up? Um, yeah, I mean, if you need to. I just want to see you slowly maneuver this thing. Because okay. you're so low to the ground. I can't imagine it's easy to do. I'm higher up. I feel like I got better balance. You know what? This is... Oh, you're can you can you go can you actually can you go this slow? Can you go this slow? I'm trying. I'm trying. Can you go this slow? Oh, are you serious right now? <laughs> <laughs> I will say hey, I'm you, impressed. You, I'm you, you, oh, said, we're going. you said you wanted to, to make oh, this okay. difficult. I didn't know we were gonna slalom the <laughs> guest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but can you do this? Oh god damn it, Moto! Oh. I wasn't ready. If you make oh, that, baby. Oh, damn it! Damn, oh, damn baby. it! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! <laughs> I can. Uh, I can. <laughs> I wasn't ready for it, to be clear, but I made it. Okay, okay. you've passed. You've passed the challenge. Congratulations. Oh, is, oh, is that challenge oh, over? You're, you're so still is that one point for me? Um, <laughs> no, it's a point for both. <laughs> oh, okay. Everyone going. rooting for the... No, no. Okay, so we gotta. W I gotta win this. Oh, we're gonna what, slalom? We'll go through there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, my, okay, thank you. <laughs> I, was, I don't think either of... I don't think your cylinder heads will win. Alright. Alright, so safety-wise, we have to stop. We've slalomed the gas station. Good job. To the highway, take a right. All right, you've passed the maneuverability challenge. Congratulations. Uh, Thank you very much. I would just like to extend uh. a... Uh, an applause I'm just to you. warning everyone that I've drink. I, I, the only thing that I've consumed today has been energy drinks and protein drinks. So there will be lots of gas coming out both <laughs> ends of my body. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, we only have one of them mic'd up, so we should be fine. You want you want some cinematic shots? Say what? That's all I'm getting, bro. Cinematic <laughs> shots. Since we're not at the highway yet. Uh, let's talk about the creature comforts as far as it pertains to uh, commuting that our motorcycles have. I have cruise control. Obviously, you have cruise control as well. Um, do you have, sir, heated grips? I do have heated grips. I have a button right here. Okay. Uh, do you have a heated seat? Um, I, I don't know if I have a heated seat. See this? I haven't spent 2,500 miles on my bike yet, so I don't know everything <laughs> about it. That's fair. That's fair. I, okay. I'm willing to bet that I don't have a heated seat since it would probably be a button next to the heated grips. Right. Or it could be like my bike where it's hidden in the menus. All right. So you have heated grips. So you have cold weather control. Uh, do you have an adjustable screen up front? I saw some weird vent thing. What's up with that? Uh, the, so the adjustable screen I have here is uh, this little if i can get it out i don't even know how why, why there we go a little i don't know i don't know if it makes much difference my my screen does go up so oh, when you okay. park it when you park it it goes down so it looks nice and cool and aesthetic oh but so it's aesthetically when you turn pleasing. it when you turn it on see here i'll show you watch down oh uh -huh. that is fancy yeah, very very cool very cool and you turn it on and drive. Uh, okay, maybe <laughs> <laughs> my screen is my screen is still turning on. 
for some reason. Uh, Not okay. quite sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so if you own a Goldwing in traffic, don't oh, turn the bike there off. Goes. Oh, of course. <laughs> Once I'm in motion, it, it goes up. It has a detector that sees when the green light turns on, and then it starts. But um, I don't believe that it can go... Yeah, I can't go higher than that. Okay, so Which you for do... for a taller rider, uh -huh. like I carry most of my height... Actually, I carry most of my height in my legs. This is not helping my <laughs> argument right now. But <laughs> as a taller rider, it uh, buffets. Buffets? Is that the uh -huh. word? Yeah. Jimmy, it, Jimmy, it Jimmy buffets the top of my head because oh, no. it's not quite It's not quite tall enough. Okay, um, fair. But it, it does come up to a certain distance. Gotcha. And uh, obviously, it looks like you have a really nice screen on your bike. I do as well. So... I feel like you've got all types of radio controls. Like you've got a whole master commander central on the front of that motorcycle. I do not have such a thing. Um, so I definitely think on the infotainment side, the Goldwing is going to offer far more things than my little Ibex uh, 800. But I'm close. Yeah, and I, yeah, and I checked um, the the page for it. It does at least have Android Auto. That was the only thing that I saw like uh, explicitly mentioned on the right. page for the Goldwing. I assume if it has Android o Auto, it should have Apple CarPlay. But yeah, and the Africa Twin has Apple CarPlay, so you would think they would they would both. But I uh, I have not tested it, and it does not have a USB C input, just a regular USB A. Got it. So. Maybe uh, we can grab a cable later and find out. Noted. Okay, so infotainment-wise, all all relatively similar. Goldwing a little better. Um, is there anything other system electronic-wise? What kind of navigation does yours have? Um, so my navigation has to go through the CF Moto app. So I have to have my CF Moto app on and connected, and then I can search an address inside of the app, and it'll route me on my uh, screen. It is not as fancy as yours, though. I will say okay. that. Okay. I, I do have a map. You do uh, have, have you not, have a map up uh, and, and ready to go. You I also do, have I physical have, dials, which is kind of neat. Uh, physical dials? Like the attack and stuff. Oh, yeah. I like that. I that's do, that's, I do that's too. nice. So if, uh, I can uh, menu, go home, routes, destination input, address. No. Oh, wow. Ah. Yeah, I can put in an address straight from this. I haven't connected my phone or anything like that, so. I mean, that's kind of cool in case something happened to your phone. You'd have that to navigate you. That is that is really neat, actually. I will. So I'll give the Goldwing the points on the tech. You're definitely winning in the tech department. I think the Ibex does good job for the price that it is. But, oh, also we should mention that. The Ibex is uh, starting price is 10500 for this model. Oh, yes, yeah. so and the Goldwing is twenty five thousand dollars. <laughs> I, I saw twenty nine. So well, uh, that's if you get the that. Well, okay. So actually, with the DCT, it might be. Um, I think it starts at like twenty five nine. Okay. And that's so, for the absolute yeah. base. And if you get like the touring DCT version, this is not the touring, but it is DCT. Right. I, I, I guess that would probably go up to like twenty nine or something like that. Okay. Uh, but it's so, probably in the range of like twenty seven, twenty eight. So we're we're comparing two motorcycles. One that costs ten thousand five hundred, and one that costs twenty five. We'll just say. That's just putting it out there. <laughs> so if you guys notice that the Ibex might lose a little bit today, that's why. Uh-oh, slow speed test, slow speed test. Where's your feet? Where's oh, your feet? Oh, well, oh my I god. Didn't know we were, I didn't know we were doing that, so <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't, pre <laughs> okay. I wasn't prepped. Did I go into the other lane a little bit? Yes. Did I keep my feet up? Also yes. Just want to put that out there. Balance king right here. Okay, safety-wise, what's the what's the Goldwing got? As far as like, you got traction control, you got ABS. What, you, what are we looking at here on the Goldwing? Oh, I didn't prep for this. You don't know? Yeah. Have you no. had any? Has anything happened where you a uh, safety me measure saved your life? I have not needed any sort of safety saving on this bike yet. You no. definitely got ABS up front. Let me uh, let me back up a little bit. Let's see what you got in the rear. Oh wait, I can't because you have a really cool looking rear on that bike. We're just gonna go ahead and assume that you've got all the tech because it's a gold wing and cost thirty thousand dollars. Why would it not? Um, yep. Do you? How do you feel the gold wing is like maneuvering around bullshit traffic like this? 
like it's oh, a it's bigger great. motorcycle so is it cumbersome or what it i mean it is a little bit more delayed just like when like if you're if you're under throttle and and you're trying to get around someone it's like ever so slightly delayed compared to something that's a little bit taller like that right uh but it's honestly it's kind of surprising something that weighs 800 pounds that once you're at speed it feels pretty light and maneuver 800 maneuverable. is what that thing weighs yeah oh my gosh so how tall are you like five, six two or something yeah six two how is the bike for a taller rider Oh, it feels great. Other than the other than the windscreen, Still buffeting. like I wish the windscreen was a cup. Like if I duck down here, like it's only a matter, of, it's only a matter no. of a couple inches. Ride like that. Ride like this the whole time. Just fucking hunched yeah, just, over. Just, just shrink your spine, and yeah. you're good. Yeah, you'll be totally fine. Um, well, that's good. I'm glad that the bike doesn't get super heavy. I mean, like this bike's right at 500. I'm sure it's a little over with all of the mods that I have on it. But I feel like because I'm higher up i can like weave easier uh especially through traffic i like being able to see like over the cars and that bike does sit pretty low uh surprisingly yeah do you have auto canceling turn signals yes i do mm. surprised i am aha i'm trying to get every win that i can for my extra sixteen thousand dollars <laughs> you, you're just trying to be like what about this what about this I'm telling you, you the, 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 Epix is a good assist? deal. I do not. I do not have that. Bam. <laughs> Boom. Oh. Roasted. Roasted. <laughs> <laughs> How hot does that bike run? Because it's hot as shit today. It, not so, at all. Not really? at all. Even yeah, with even the cylinders I'm, right there. Uh, yeah, no, dude. If I'm sitting at... I, I was... Uh, I guess I had it off there. But no, I've, I've sat around with this bike with it on, and it I don't feel any heat. That's one of the things I've noticed over time is the Ibex puts a little bit of heat on my legs a lot. A, a little bit of heat on my legs a lot. I said what I said. But yeah, like when we're on a, on a hot day like today, stuck in traffic, which inevitably you're going to get stuck in traffic, um, it does get a little warm. A little warm. Which is why it's great for the highway where I can just go. I would say, does your bike like getting into gear? Because mine does not. Maybe it's just hot. Yeah, I can get into gear. See, I'm in neutral, and I'm in drive. Shut up, <laughs> <laughs> asshole. Asshole with your DCT. Any idea how many cc's that giant thing has? 833? Really? I think so. I thought it was way more than that. No, because it's a GL1800. Oh, so if I'm at 799 or something, we've got relatively similar power plants then. I mean, Excuse oh. me? Right, you said 800. 1800. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear the first one. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm over here like, why is that thing so big if it's only got 800 cc's? No, no, it would struggle pushing around 800 uh, pounds with only 800 cc. <laughs> that would be CCs. one cc per pound. Oh my uh, God, it'd be a it'd be a lawnmower. All righty, there would be no good commuting test without a highway entrance pull. That is what we will now commence. Uh, oh, in that in that case, I'm gonna go into sport mode. Oh shit. Do you have modes? I have modes. I have sport and rain, and I never use one of them. And I'll let you, you guess ready which for one this? it is. I'm fr I'm freaking on a I'm a, on a 600 now. I oh my god that that thing's way more aggressive than it needs to be. All right, hold on. Let's back off. Let's back off and let the cars get ahead of us. You're on DCT too, so I'm on old school shifting. What are we going okay. to? 90? Uh, uh, that, okay, that's ambitious, but we can try. All right. Yeah, we can cool. do that. The people behind us are waiting. Ready? On your mark. Three, two, one, go. Come on, Ibex! <laughs> <laughs> I got oh, yeah. <laughs> Daily 100, baby. <laughs> Daily 100. I got f***ing walked by a gold wing. God oh, dang yeah. it. Laying down the smackdown. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I was holding there with you for a hot second. Okay, but now the real test is... 
How does it how does it do excel uh, in a race at speed? Hold on, let me get my aerodynamics figured out real quick. <laughs> it's a little less fancy, but <laughs> <laughs> Hold this on, is, hold on, I'm getting there. Schedule. Wait, you gotta uh, tighten it down? Uh, shut up, shut up, I'm getting there. It's, okay. It's like you're trying to adjust a GoPro <laughs> screw. I am now ready for touring. <laughs> okay, let's go from 60. Alright. Are we doing a pull? Like a pull? Yeah, pull? we're doing a pull. Alright, from 60? Yeah. I don't know if this might be too high of a gear, but alright, you count me down. No, you can, you can shift down. I don't want to blow the engine. All, All right. right, so three. What are we going two. to? Two. Okay. Wait, I'll, I'll count down. Uh, okay. Two ninety-five. Okay. Three, two, one, go. God, going to red line. I am going to red line, and it Bruh. does not matter at Bruh. all. <laughs> I'm just gone. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's awesome, though. That is amazing. Oh my right, God, that's fantastic. We're just gonna be staying straight on this road for quite a while. Okay, I'm gonna go into econ mode so I can win this fuel challenge. No, 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 you're gonna go to sport mode just to spank me and then to eco. <laughs> Off. Oh my God, okay, well, <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, so now that we're on the highway, we're chilling. We've done our little power thing. Uh, Comfort-wise, how's your seat? How much wind are you dealing with on your body? Like, talk me through that. Yeah, I got. I mean, I've mentioned it before. The only place that I'm getting wind is the top of my head. But again, drop your spine, and you got no wind. <laughs> I'm honestly but surprised it, you don't get more wind on your body because you don't have a. I mean, I guess you got the little wind deflectors there on the side. And the, the mirror, I mean, the mirrors are pretty streamlined, but they, they add uh, some wind protection for your arms. I do right. have a little bit like on the top of my shoulders. Right. But it's it's more comfortable than anything. Like I yeah. wouldn't want complete protection from the wind. Otherwise, in this heat, I would get pretty hot. Right. So I'm kind of the same way. The only real wind I have is kind of like on my upper shoulder region. Uh, everything else kind of like blocks it up. The uh, Ibex has a really wide gas tank, so like you can see how much area I have right there. But like once we get going on the highway, that uh, that heat kind of dissipates and feels so much better. <laughs> How's the seat? Like, can you move it around and get comfortable? Because like if you're on the highway for a long time, your butt's gonna get sore and you're gonna want to kind of like move around. Is it comfortable to move around on that seat? Like physically move around myself? Yeah, like. <laughs> like this? Is this what you okay, want to see? Yes, yes, okay, cool. So you've got a big comfortable seat. I imagine it's comfortable, right? It kind of has yeah, to be. I, it's a gold I can sit back here if I want. Oh, we're doing that? <laughs> okay, cool. Back seat bros. Yeah, it's actually, I don't know if you knew this. This is actually a, a MotoGP bike. <laughs> oh, got it. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, so um, if, if you really want to get at it. <laughs> yeah, if you want to be real pro, that's how you ride quick. But no, it, this is pretty wide here. I mean, your, your legs are tucked behind the fairings right here. So right. again, lots of wind protection. Gotcha. I will say your storage is far more sleek than mine. Granted, mine's aftermarket, I've put it on it. But I love the idea of like having the tucked in storage. That's so, it's so cool. And it's a really sleek package, you know? Yeah, for sure. How do the, uh, how do the bags work? Like how much can you fit in there? So uh, both sides, it's 30 liters per side. Oh, okay. So six, 60 liters on this uh, bagger version. But if you have the tour version that has the big um, trunk back right here, uh, then you've got an additional 61 liters for an a, additional 51 total. Holy yeah. shit. Those yeah, bags do not look like the, uh, they hold 30. Yeah, they're, they're pretty big. I mean, they, they, there's space inside, so like it, it, oh. it goes a little bit, uh, it goes a little bit deeper than you can see. Right. That's awesome, man. That's crazy that you can add 50 liters with just a top case. Uh, I'm totally looking at like 105 liters of storage, not including my uh, tank bag and my little side guys. 
So just uh -huh. the side bags back here and my uh, tail bag. That's how much. So that's pretty close, honestly. That's like what? 40 liters off, 30 liters off. I guess that's a lot. That's a whole bag. Now, are you in, are you including what you got at the front too? No, that doesn't include these guys or my uh, tank bag. Gotcha. So, like, all in all, if you had that top case, we would probably be like 20 liters difference. You'd have a little more. Uh, but I've kind of spread mine out over the entire motorcycle. Watch out for that. Oh, thing. but see, see, I also have like an extra liter right here. <laughs> oh, you got a little cubby. Nice. Okay, okay. I guess we could talk about how stable that bike is on the highway now that we're going like 80 miles an hour highway speed. Like, I would have to imagine it's insanely stable. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can you can see the uh, suspension working on here. So the, the Goldwing has double wishbone suspension up here. And you can oh. like, literally just sit here and watch it working. And it's incredible because I'm, co I'm just completely level. That's it's like, really cool. It's like a, yeah, it's like I'm driving an SUV with air suspension. Right. It just levels everything out. I'm completely, everything is completely smooth. Yeah, it takes that all is the something. Little jitters out. That's something. If you're going to be on the highway like all day, I think you would notice a massive difference because, like, I'm regular suspension going on here, and it's adjustable and all, but it is nothing like that. Like, I can literally see your handlebars and your mirrors are not moving at all. Whereas I've got these like little vibrations, they don't really matter to me. But like, if I was gonna ride all day, I would notice a little bit of fatigue from that. Whereas with that, you're just you're super chilling, you know? Right. I gotta be honest. I wanted to do this video because I thought the Ibex would be like just as good, and I'm realizing like this bike gets to about 75 to 80 percent. But if you want to get to that level of comfort on the highway, you you have to spend a lot of money. Yeah, you do. I, I mean, think... because it, it's all compounding. Like all the different features that you have to make a bike comfortable to ride long distance or high speed, it, it all just adds up. And when you're adding up all those different things, you know, the suspension, the seat, the wind protection, the, the you know, the cruise control, right. all of that stuff, it's just adding on value or yeah. adding on price. But when you put it all together, you got something like this that is just amazing to ride. Right. The only thing, it doesn't have radar cruise control, so that's a little bit disappointing. Do you know if the but new think, model does? Because I would imagine that... I don't think the... No, I don't think the, the new model does, but I think it's only a matter of time before they have it on here. Right. Especially with, like, a middle-class bike, like the Tracer 9 GT Plus, like, introducing it at, like, 16 grand. I feel like Honda's going to have to respond to that with a radar cruise over a Goldwing. Oh, wait, here's a question. Can your cruise control be set above 80 miles an hour? Can yours not? No, it cannot. Ah, one step uh, closer to the 16 grand, baby. Woo! All right, let's, I'm gonna bump up. I'm gonna yeah. throttle up to 85. And set. Yeah, I can do it. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, the Ibex does cap out at 80 miles an hour. Now, I will say, I went across the country on this thing uh, vertically, and I did not need to set the cruise above 80, but it is a no, note. That's a, that's a pretty good speed to set at. Yeah, because you don't want to go cruise that much higher than that, because that's getting a little sketchy. Oh, you mean you don't want to cruise at 100 miles per hour on a naked bike for 12 hours? Do I? Yes, kind of. But, like, should I? Absolutely not. <laughs> oh, okay, brake, brake test. test. <laughs> uh, <laughs> those are those are good brakes. On yours? Those are some, yeah, those are some yeah. really nice brakes. <laughs> oh, wait, we got what we wanted. <laughs> we, we got the red light. We, <laughs> we got ready? that and a brake test. I don't have, I don't have launch control, but... I'm okay, on a I regular the, motorcycle. Are you let kidding? Me, let me switch back. Let me switch back into sport mode. All Do you right, think the Goldwing has wheelie control? On green, <laughs> and we just go to 50. Or what's the speed limit? I don't even know. Let's uh, go to 50. We'll, go, we'll, uh, we'll no 60. We'll we'll be to, we'll be at 60 by like the true. All right, on green. On turn green. lane up there. God, I am not good at this at all. Okay. Oh God, I'm gonna suck so bad. I'll this move is, into the right lane after I go. 
This is what an F1 driver feels like, and I don't like it. Yeah. Oh my god, I am nervous as hell right now. Should I back up? You're. Shut I'm up. Max for, I'm, I'm Max Verstappen starting, starting on the front row. Come of the on, Shaw. Come on, Shaw. <laughs> shit. You're, shit. You're, 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 you're Charles, and your uh, your pole position is gonna let. Oh my god, dude. No. No. Walked again. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> Oh my god, dude. And back to econ mode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck off! Fuck off! Damn it! I th I, there was a, th this much of me thought that there was a chance that maybe the DCT would suck. And here we are. That was... That was unreal. That was weird to feel the front end on the Goldwing light. Yeah, I bet. I could literally see the whole thing shift. <laughs> that was awesome. So we got a brake test and an acceleration test. That was incredibly smooth. Wow. That was the easiest acceleration from a stop that I've ever experienced on a motorcycle. And it is not slow despite the 800 pounds. No, I'm surprised. This thing is not, uh, yeah, it's no slouch. That's a lot of power also to like manage. You know what I mean? Like to be able to. Do you want to, do you want to rematch? I'll give you the head start. Oh, it's, I mean, part of me no, says yes, but the God. other part of me is going to be embarrassed and say no, no God, but yes, please, I do. No, okay. How no, much of a, re how much no. of a uh, handicap do I get? No. Uh, I'll give you until the other side of that crosswalk. No way to 65, bro. You're about to get slapped. <laughs> Go, Mybex! Oh go! My god. Oh my god! Go! Oh my god. He's coming! Uh, yeah, no, you got me. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was probably like two and a half seconds, actually. Yeah, that was that way was, too big of a gap, but bro, I took every bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was much much bigger of an advantage than I thought it would be. <laughs> I I realized that too, but I'm still gonna count it as a win because my ego there, really needs it. I was sitting there, I was like, wait, I'm waiting a long time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was awesome! Thank you for letting me feel like I won something today. I really appreciate that. You're welcome. I really I was getting to that point where I was like, I need to win something before I ask you if it can go off-road or something. Oh my God, that was hilarious. So did you check how much uh, capacity your tank has? Uh, mine has like a 5.1 gallon gas tank. Oh, so nearly as big. How big is yours? That's what she said. 5.5. <laughs> oh, I imagine you'd be able to ride way more efficiently though in lower RPMs. So you, you'll probably have a, a much higher uh, range than me. Yeah, what did you say that your your range is on a full tank? My range for a full tank, um, 195 to 205, depending on how much I'm loaded up. But yeah. with my side bags and my top case, about 195. Okay. Yeah, I'm at I'm at 200 200 miles left right now. Yeah, I'm at 139. I do know that taking the side bags off does help a lot, though. They uh they seem to slow the fuel or the range down. Oh yeah, definitely. Mr. Motonosity, now that we're off the highway, we've been on the highway for about an hour. Are you even phased at this point or or what? No, nah, dude, it's like I just got on the bike. Yeah, okay. I, that is the same here. Like I I feel like we just started riding. <laughs> so Oh yeah. For that sure. is one of the pros of both of these motorcycles that you know, I feel like most people probably have an hour to an hour and a half commute max, like the majority of people. Before and, like wanting wanting to stop and take a break. Right. I don't think either of these motorcycles is going to even blink at a one hour, at like one hour to one hour and a half commute. Like it, it's gonna eat it for lunch type situation. Oh yeah. But the question is, who is better? And it's time to find out in like 10 minutes for us at least. Is this thing on? Dad? Dad, is this is this thing on? Hello? Hello? <laughs> Hello, my name is Jeff. Okay. 
We have now ridden about an hour and a half up the highway through the city to get here. You guys might be able to see in the background, we have the beautiful base of the North Georgia mountains that we're gonna be continuing into on Brent's video. So if you haven't checked it out, check it out in the links in the description. But we've spent about an hour and a half on these bikes. So I think we should go over them, how we've done, how are we feeling? And then we have to crown a commuter king. All right, start with the Goldwing. Start with the Goldwing. How are we? How do we feel? Yeah, so uh, absolutely incredible. I mean, I don't think anybody's surprised that if you're going to be doing a long distance ride that uh, the sofa of motorcycles is very good at it. Uh, the thing that I was honestly just, I, even with those expectations, very surprised by right. was that after, what, an hour and a half yeah. of riding, it's it still felt like I had just gotten on the bike. Whereas if I'm reading, riding any of my, you know, sport bikes or anything like that, you're gonna be wanting a break at that point. And I had no no feeling at all of needing to stop, so. We stopped because we had to conclude the video. Right. Like if we weren't <laughs> doing a video, it would be like, dude, you good on gas? Awesome, because I am too, we're solid. Yeah. Um, one of the huge takeaways that I took from watching you ride was the suspension. I did not know it had that level of suspension on a Goldwing, because I could tell like, the Ibex does not have that level of suspension. I could tell how smooth you were going on the highway because, like we were talking about, you can watch the suspension like, right. doing its work. But this thing was not moving like the whole time. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I mean, I'm comfortable and all and I'm fine, but like I am kind of jealous a little bit. Yeah, so like having driven a few cars that have air suspension, that is like one of the best things that you can have right. for just like comfortable highway riding. And while this is not air suspension, it almost feels like it is yeah, because it's that smooth. Um, okay, so, oh, another thing that I'm envious of, your bags are so, not only are they sleek, you guys can see how they're just like perfectly built in, but they also have so much more space than they look like. Yeah, uh, yeah, so. i shocked with that. Yeah, so it, you, you would think that you've j you know just got like this cut off right here of space, but it kind of goes in a little bit more. So right. yeah, each side you're, you got 30 liters each. So um, a lot of space. I was surprised that you don't quite have enough space for a helmet. On the sides, On yeah. the sides. Um, you do have a helmet lock that you can put it, put it on, but it would have been nice to be able to stick it in there because I was riding this yesterday and I you know locked the helmet just sitting on the seat. And here in the summer with the sun, especially with a black helmet, that thing burns. Absolutely. So you put that thing back on and it's, you know, that, that that's the most uncomfortable thing about riding this, <laughs> is right. putting your hot helmet back on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, and you found out how to adjust your screen. Yeah, so uh, the screen does automatically come up and go down. So it goes down when you turn it off and it right. comes up when you uh, start it up or start riding. Um, but you do have control over the height over here. Uh, we'll have to test that out a little bit more. I don't think, I think it comes up to full height uh, when it when it when you start going. So right. I still don't think it completely solves, you know, a taller yeah, rider, because yeah. um, you're gonna feel it right on the top of your head, unless you do a little uh, two inch drop. But, <laughs> yeah. Right. Speaking of taller rider, let's move this way and talk about the taller bike in the group. Um, so after an hour and a half, and I've I've done an iron butt on this bike before, so I'm I'm not surprised. You do shake a little bit but it's not a bad level of shaking. Uh, and I don't even have rubber pegs on the bottom. I have like the off-road pegs. Uh, so the vibration wasn't an issue at all. Uh, there is a lot of fit and finish that that thing it just nails, like absolutely nails. And this bike is $16,000. It, it is literally half the price plus some. Right. So it's like, I get it, but seeing your dash and how like everything is super nice. And this has a TFT. I have no problem with it, but when you compare it to something like that, you're like, man, bells and whistles are awesome. <laughs> uh, I think that like this bike is fantastic. It can do the off-road stuff. If you guys haven't seen those videos, I'll put links in the description for it. But this seat is great. Uh, I feel like seating wise, we're, we're the same. Like I could, I, I, I have ridden this all day, like truly all day, no problem. It did great on the highway. It's just very obvious what bells and whistles get you now. That's what I'm taking away from this whole video. It's like, okay, cool. 10,500. Absolutely crazy good deal. Not as good as that, but pretty damn close for 16 grand less. Yeah. I could literally buy one of these for my friend and one for me, and I would still have five grand. So I don't know what I would do. Well, I can <laughs> just bring my friend here on the back in comfort. <laughs> 
So, okay. Uh, oh, I will say, seeing your luggage just slick. Now, I love my Lone Rider stuff. I've got a 38 liter here, a 31 liter here, and this I believe is 36 liters. So, um, if I so that's 105 ish. Hashtag maths. Um, I can have a tank bag. I can have a bigger one if I need. I've got side bags. So if you had the top case, I think I could probably get close to your storage level, but yours is all built in and super sleek. And this actually does take a pretty big hit on the uh, total range, Yeah, which is something we need to talk about. Uh, I need to check out my range. Check your range of what your bike can go left. And we're just gonna go off of what the bikes say they'll do. So we can check the footage uh, to see what mine was at when we first started. I didn't take a look. I wanna say it's something high 200s. Anyways, I'm at 196 now, left okay. of a range. I, generally this bike says 195 when I fill up a tank. I am at 139. Okay. So it's not bad, but we, like, as we said, like the gas tanks are very close. Like mine's a right above five and yours is a 5.5. Yeah. And you have almost 70 miles of range more than me. Obviously this is estimated in the bike and all, but that's a lot of range more. Especially yeah. if you're doing like a, if you're doing an iron butt, let me tell you, 70 miles of range is like, bro, I could go a couple towns more. Right. You know what I mean? Before I have to pull off, which when you're out like in the middle of nowhere, about 50 miles left, you start being like that. I don't want to be stranded thing pops into your head. So 70 miles would, would be huge. Um, yeah. Also, like, look at the bikes next to each other and look how much smaller the Goldwing looks compared to an Ibex. And it's not <laughs> its not a small bike. No, no. It's, <laughs> they're both big, but, like, the Goldwing is, like, the stereotypical, like, big cruiser. Yeah, so I'm 6'2", and it's coming up to, you know, shoulder level on here. Yeah. This is, like, mid-stomach, mid top yeah. stomach. I and, like being up taller, though, like, personally. Yeah. So I'm, I'm cool with that. I wrote, I, uh, I've ridden a Goldwing before and there's something about being low in the bike that I'm not a huge fan of. I don't oh. know if that's just personal preference or, or what. All right. We've, we've done all the talking we, we need to now. Let me just climb over here. Yeah. Um, okay. Here's what we're going to do so that we can be in, entirely objective here. Uh, we're going to do three, two, one, and then we're going to say which one we would rather take across the country. So like the ultimate tour, if we had to. All right. You ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Your mom. Oh! oh, sorry. Uh, the Goldwing. <laughs> I will admit, seeing how good that thing is, the, the I think the suspension would would push me over the edge on that. Yeah. Just seeing how smooth that is, because like the vibrations, like I said in the video, like they. They don't matter, but like, it's gotta be an entirely different experience to ride with suspension like that yeah. compared to, to shaking and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, obviously it's gonna come, you know, everyone's different. It's completely right. su actual subjective uh, opinions on it, but you gotta determine what you actually are doing a cross country trip for. Are you doing a cross country trip because you wanna go ride in cool motorcycle places? Right. Or are you essentially doing a road trip on a motorcycle? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the 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 thing I'm telling myself is the video or the the trip I'm doing is all asphalt. I'm doing no no nothing else because obviously the second you're like I'm, I'm I want to go down like a single track or something like that. I, mean, I guess you could. You could totally <laughs> do that on the Goldwing, but it would probably be an incredibly terrible idea. Uh, whereas if I was going to do anything other than asphalt, I, I would go Ibex every time because yeah. it's so damn close for so much less money, right. you know what I mean? Okay, well that's it. We found out that the Goldwing is indeed the king of the road. I guess this is not really a surprise it's, it's video. Not, it's not a road king, but it is the king of the road. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to click the video here at the end that'll go to Moto's video of performance testing. And I still love my Ibex. Thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, let us know if you learned something in the comments down below and go sub to Motor Nasty so you can see his video. Buddies out. We're making videos again together. This is great. Subscribe for more. Do like, it. Actually. Do it. And let me know if you like the chat GPT thing because that was great. My name is Jeff. Oh God, Jeff. Jeff. Uh, hello. 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry guys. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry.